Our next speaker is the leader of the Indigenous Right Group, Idol Namar, Minnesota. Please welcome Patricia Shepard. I want to say thank you all for being here. Thank you, thank you to all the nations who are represented here today from all over this country. But more importantly, this movement just didn't happen. There's always a history behind every movement, and it comes from the heart. Every time that we are oppressed as a people, we are moved to take action. And today I want to honor an individual who couldn't make it here today. His name is Phil St. John. He's sister in Wapkin. He lives in Bismarck, North Dakota. And I went to school with him. And I also am an alumni of the University of Minnesota twice over. So thank you, the university. But I wanted to speak on behalf of Phil, and I shared this with him on the, the other night when I was on the phone with him, because back in the late 80s, when we were on the forefront of the Chippewa Treaty Rights struggle, Phil had his own heart and his own struggle going on here right in Minneapolis when he took his son, Terry St. John and Justina St. John, to a game. And it was at Humboldt High School. And when he was there, the team was called the Indians. And Terry took offense to that. On his own, he realized the impact that that imagery was having on his children and how it would affect the children in the future in, this, in the Twin Cities area and all over the country. So he took it upon himself. He told me, he said, I wasn't really a good speaker, so I had to reach out to people that I knew could speak. And one was Fred Bacon, who's also a community member from Leech Lake. And he also reached out to Roy Robertson, who passed on into the spirit world, bless him. You know, bless you, Roy for the work that you did while you were here because these three gentlemen launched this movement on their own. Jerry went to the city of Minneapolis and the Minneapolis School Board and talked to the Minneapolis School Board expressing their concerns about the impact that Indian mascots were going to be having on our future generations and how it bothers him, how it was offensive to him. At that time, Jerry, his sons, his, his uh, children, Phil, Fred, these three gentlemen, on their own, took on the Minneapolis School Board. And at that time, Harry Davis was the chairman of the Minneapolis School Board. And Harry Davis heard their plea and banned all Indian mascot usage of all public schools in the Minneapolis area. And these men... It's banned here in the city. It's banned in the public school systems. But Phil, on his own, as an own individual who had a heart, who had a concern, didn't stop there. He formed an organization called CAPE, Concerned American Indian Parents, who came together as an organization. And one time Terry was telling me he was going down Highway 55, and he's seen a big logo of Minnegasco. You know, Center Point Energy used to be called Minnegasco, for those of you who remember, and there was a big native logo. And Terry took it upon himself to call a meeting with the CEO. And he expressed to the CEO at that time, he said, man, I was overwhelmed. There was a big office, and you know, I, I, I was overwhelmed by the experience with this big CEO, and he said to him, I seen a billboard coming in, and I wanted to express my concern to you about that. And the gentleman heard him at Minnegasco, Center Point Energy. He heard him out, and he said, I'm offended by it. I'm Native American. I'm Susan Watson. You know, I've been raised by my grandmother, my mother. I know my language. I know my culture. I know who I am as a human being, and I take offense to that. He said, do you, sir? And he said yes, and he got on the phone, and he told me that I want that billboard removed right now. That's what Center Point Energy did for Phil St. John that day. It was those little battles, those little battles that, you know, had started here. And at that time, when Phil reached out to the local leadership, we were on some other issues. We were on, you know, the spear fishing issue, the treaty rights issue. And he and these two gentlemen took this issue on, and at that time, you know, at that time, it wasn't popular. People weren't hearing it. People weren't listening to it. But I just want to thank everyone here today, and especially Phil St. John, for his courage at that time in his life to step it up to the plate on behalf of our people and honoring us. And what a day to celebrate. Say no, no to mascots. We are not your mascots. We are not your mascots. Change the name. I don't know more. <laughs> Uh, 
Gotta love Patty.